Thank you for joining today's Training Tuesday webinar on concrete repair and restoration. I am Heidi Reese and I am here with uh, Chuck Hoke, National Training Manager. I'm a part of the marketing department at Dayton Superior. And as you may already know, we perform these half hour Training Tuesday sessions every week at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if you've missed any in the past and you want to review them, see them, download them, they are all out on our Dayton Superior website at DaytonSuperior.com. Just search for product videos and you can find them. We also um, put them out on the YouTube channel. And this month we've talked about chemicals. We're going to continue on with that. Um, let's do some housekeeping first as we do each week. So everyone joining the call has been muted, uh, but we still want to invite you to ask the questions throughout and after the presentation. And you can do so by using the, the Zoom chat functionality. And at the end, we will have a brief question and answer session for those. So as I said before, all web webinars are recorded, so you can later view them. Uh, this one is not an exception, so you can re-listen to it later on. So let's get to it. Today we also have with us Holly Jurgens, and she will be discussing concrete and the ways to repair and restore it. So after the webinar, you should understand why it is important to use uh, the, the, the types of chemicals and the problems and resolutions that they solve. You should be able to select the correct materials and application methods. You will understand preparation and installation. And then how can Dayton Superior help you with your project needs? So a little about Holly. She presented last Tuesday, so you may have heard this, but we're going to tell her good stuff again. She is the chemical product manager here at Dayton Superior. And she has been with us a little over eight years and worked in the research and development, manufacturing, and most currently, as I said, the Dayton Superior chemical product manager. She's formulated and tested many of our innovative products in the Dayton Superior lab. And as a chemical engineer, she brings a wealth of knowledge about these chemicals and actually designed a lot of them that we have in market today. She's also worked on the job site, has an MBA um, in the business, to show the business knowledge side of things, and is very well rounded for that product management role in both the technical and the formula aspect. So without further ado, Holly. Thank you very much, Heidi. So just a reminder that this presentation is intended for training purposes only. For more information on any of our products mentioned in the training, you can go to our website at www.daytonsuperior.com. So as Heidi mentioned, we're going to be talking about concrete repair applications and procedures. So why do we repair or restore? You might be looking to improve the appearance of your job site. You might be restoring for structural integrity or performance. So why bother restoring instead of just ditching what you already have and starting over? Well, it can also be more expensive to start from scratch. So why not take some of the great repair products that we have and put them to good use? So it's extremely important to identify and correct the actual root cause of your problem. So you want to start by asking, what are the symptoms? You might see some repeating patterns, some spalling rust stains, you want to do a condition survey. So you want to collect all that background information and you want to quantify the percent of failure or the problem to really get down to the root of what's going on. If you fail to correct that root cause, then you will probably result in a repeat of that same problem. So you want to be asking the right questions and taking care of what's really causing the issue that you're seeing. In order to do this, you want to make sure you're choosing the right product to fix your problem, and this can be overwhelming. Maybe you need to hit a specific strength or accommodate a vertical or overhead orientation. Maybe you're forming and pouring. Do you need protection against salt, or will it be exposed to harsh weather? Maybe you are going through a few freeze thaw cycles in a year. All of these are going to play into what material you're going to select. And again, maybe you're more concerned with aesthetics. When it comes to what material you're selecting, all of our repair mortars are going to give you a different look and feel from the color to the size of the aggregate that's in each product. There's also various application locations. So this is going to determine the method and the product selection. Some general repairs like our recreate products 
go into both vertical overhead and horizontal applications. So we'll get into those more a little later. But we do have our form and pour, vertical overhead, horizontal, and sometimes you can even do spray on mortars. One of the application methods that we also offer with some of our products is called dry packing. So dry packing is one way in which to hand apply a repair material. So the product is dry enough to pack into a ball, but it doesn't have the expense of bleeding with the water. Problem with this is you have to be careful. If it's way too dry, then the product will not hydrate properly, and then you're not gonna have the performance you're looking for. Some products are only meant for dry packing, while others have the option based on their water addition rate. Another application method is form and pour. So the form and pour is exactly how it sounds. You're going to form up in front of your repair, and you're going to pour from the top into the bottom. So it's going to allow that air to come up through the top, and you might have a vibrating mechanism on the outside to help get rid of those air bubbles. Form and pump is similar, except in this case, instead of pouring in, you're actually going to pump from the bottom. So you want to have an outlet at the top to make sure that as you're pumping in from the bottom, that air is getting pushed out through the top. Again, you're going to want a vibrator that's going to help with that consolidation on the outside of your form. So in the picture, you can kind of see an example. They have some inlets and outlets on the forming that they've set up to do their form and pump. Another application that I had mentioned was spraying. So you do have the option to use low velocity or high velocity sprayers depending on the size of the area, what kind of thickness your product has, and the kind of product in general. Next we've got a little bit on preparation and installation. Your surface prop is extremely important. Your repairs should be square or rectangular in shape to kind of help minimize that extra stress. So added stress can cause cracking and various other issues. You might need to add a saw cut or a relief cut and fill it with a sealant. If you've got cracked areas, like you can see on the left, you don't want to do a ridiculous layout like in the middle, all of those angles, all of the potential cracking areas. You want to keep it simple with a recommended layout on the right, which is a simple rectangular or square combined geometry. Next up, we've got mechanical profiling. So once your repair geometry is figured out, you want to consider your surface profile. So IPRI, the International Concrete Repair Institute, actually defines these CSPs, or concrete surface profiles. And they offer a guidebook and chips if you're interested. Each one's going to go from 1 to 10, and it's going to show you what that surface profile looks like. There are various means of mechanical ways to create your desired surface profile. You might be using a concrete grinder, a shot blaster, or using a concrete scarifier in order to achieve your desired CSP. Lastly, in your prep phase, you want to be sure to wet the surface of your repair. So a SSD surface or saturated surface dry going to prevent your repair surface from soaking up the water in your repair product. If you're not going to wet out that surface, it's going to be hungry for water and it's going to take it from your repair mortar when you put it on the surface. This is going to affect the hydration of your repair mortar and it's also going to affect its end performance. So it's very important to make sure that that surface is SSD, it's going to create a nice, moist, less absorp absorbed surface with no standing water. Next up, we have mixing. There are various methods in which you can mix your product depending on what it is and the size of aggregate it has. You could be mixing by hand, using a drill and paddle, or if you have larger stone involved in your product, you're probably looking at using a concrete mixer or mortar mixer. Always, always, always mix your bag or pail first as the contents will segregate and your performance will suffer because of that. Whenever you've got pails or bags that are on a truck, even if you just put them in a wheelbarrow to take them from one place on the job site to the other, all of that vib vibration is going to make sure that your product's settling. And you want to make sure that that product's not settled and segregated when you go to use it, or you're only going to get partial performance out of it. 
So always mix your bag first. Hand mixing, you're going to add liquid to powder. And mechanical mixing, you're going to add powder to liquid. An easy way that I remember it, hand mixing starts with an H, comes first in the alphabet. Liquid starts with an L, comes before powder in the alphabet. So hand is always liquid to powder, and then mechanical is the opposite. Mechanical is powder to liquid. As you begin your install, you want to start with a scrub coat. So this is going to create a nice bonding layer for your repair. You can simply brush it on or hand apply it onto your repair area. It's almost like if you're doing a project at home and you want to scruff up your surface to make sure that your paint sticks better, you might sand it first. This is also going to help with that bonding, but you're applying a little bit of the product first, again, with a brush or with your hand to make sure that you're going to bond properly. This is something that's super important. All of your repairs should be cured. So for polymer modified materials, you want that water cure for about two hours. If you don't have the time or the means to stand there and make sure that it stays wet for that amount of time, then you wanna make sure you're using an ASTM C309 curing compound. Dayton Superior offers quite a few of them. This is going to be a quick example of what a prep and install for a horizontal repair mortar looks like. First, on that top side, you want to see that surface prepared with that CSP profile. It's in a nice geometric rectangle orientation. Two, you want to make sure that you're doing your SSD. So they're dampening that surface to make sure that, that water is not going to pull out of their repair mortar once they put it down. Now they're adding their scrub coat. So they've got brushes, they're putting a little bit of the product down to create that bonding layer. In the bottom right, you see them starting to apply it with their trowels, making sure that they're getting that nice and smooth before they go on to brooming. So they're going to broom it, finish it, and then, as I said, one of the most important parts is making sure that you're curing it. So they have that curing compound put down on there to make sure they get the proper hydration in their product. Now we're going to go into some of the Dayton Superior Concrete Repair products. We have four different categories we're going to go through. This includes vertical and overhead, horizontal, general repair, and form and pour. We're starting with our vertical and overhead repairs. These are meant to be used only in the vertical overhead orientation. We've got our architectural finish, perma patch VO, HD25 VO, and our civil structural VO. Architectural finish is one of our rubbing slash smoothing repair products. It can be used in the vertical and overhead position. It is polymer modified, which helps with its strength, and it can go down to a feather edge finish. Next is our HD25VO, so it's a heavy duty polymer modified fiber reinforced product. It has a quick 20 minute set time for those jobs where you need to just get in and get it done. You can also extend it with clean wash stone greater than two inches. Civil Structural VO is one of our products with an integral corrosion inhibitor, so it's great when it comes to resisting that salt. It's excellent with free saw resistance. It does have fiber reinforcement in it, and it offers superior strength. It's very common to use when you're pumping or spraying a material. Now we're going to look at some of our horizontal repair products. We have quite a few of them. We've got our thin resurfacer, our special patch, which is actually a two component with a polymer liquid that goes in with our um, cement patch, our HD50, our DOT rapid repair, Pave Patch 3000, and then our two epoxies are our rapid resin repair and our Sure patch. So our thin resurfacer is a resurfacing repair that's used in the horizontal orientation. It is polymer modified and similar to our architectural finish, it also goes down to a feather edge. HD50 is our heavy duty horizontal repair. It's a polymer modified, fiber reinforced, very rapid setting repair mortar. It also comes with the option to extend it. And you can do this up to 60% per bag. Next, we've got our DOT Rapid Repair. This is one of our newer products. It's an all-around great product. You've got your fiber reinforcement, polymers, 
an integral corrosion inhibitor. It comes in both neat and pre-extended options. It offers great early strength, and as the name implies, it does have a rapid set time. As I mentioned, we do offer epoxy patches for concrete repair as well. This is one of them. It's a three component. You've got an A and a B side for your epoxy and a C side, which is your specially graded aggregate. What's great about epoxy repairs is that they offer superior chemical and abrasion resistance compared to their cement-based counterparts. Next, we have our general use repairs. This is our Recrete 5-Minute, Recrete 20-Minute, and Polyfast FS. The Polyfast FS is going to provide a general concrete repair with a polymer-modified option. Our Recrete 5-Minute and 20-Minute is pretty much what it sounds like. They offer 5-Minute and 20-Minute set time. These can be used in any orientation, horizontal, vertical, overhead. They are shrinkage compensated, and you are allowed to substitute water with our J40 acrylic bonding agent in a one-to-one -one ratio if you need improved for, for performance for any reason. We also offer the Recrete 20 in a light formulation, which is great for precast. Lastly, we have our form and pore repairs. We have our civil structural FPX and our permapatch FP. Our civil structural SPX is similar to our civil structural VO in that it includes an integral corrosion inhibitor. It is pre-extended for your form and pore repairs. You can use it in vertical, overhead, or horizontal applications, and it's got great strength with excellent freeze-thaw resistance. So choosing a repair mortar, as you can see, it can be kind of daunting based on just the sheer number of options available to you. We only went through a few of our options today, but our website offers great resources to be able to help you in your selection. Um, whether you're looking at selection guides or maybe an overview of concrete repair in general, we've got all kinds of resources in order to help you choose your product. So some of our main points to remember, you want to make sure that you're treating the cause, not the effect. Otherwise, you might see that effect happen again and again and wonder what's happening. Your surface prep is a key component to the repair process. You want to make sure that you're setting up your repair geometry to not add any additional stress to your system. Your profile needs to be at the correct level, and you want to make sure that you're doing your SSD surface. Lastly, remember that you need to cure your repair mortar. If you need help finding the right product or solving any of your problems, the Dayton Superior Tech Service team is only a phone call away. They're able to help with all kinds of problems from application, specification questions, independent certifications. They're dedicated to helping outside in the field. We've got engineering help, contractor help, and we can also provide hands-on site help. Any questions? Well, thank you, Holly. Someone was ready. <laughs> Let me see here. All right. My favorite friend has, has emailed us or has chatted with us. For markets where Dane Superior may not be well specified, and for those that may be newer to our industry, do you have an updated comparison chart to other manufacturers' repair products? He also continues to say, I see individual products compared on the website, but do you have a sheet that we can access all at one time? And we I do. If you showed a little image of that, right? So we actually have what's considered our whole product-wide cross-reference sheet. So on our website, if you go under the reference tools, there is one that should say cross-reference tool. And in that tool, you can either plug in a specific product, which you can also do in our search bar, or there should be a link that says click here to see the cross-reference guide. That's going to pull up what's a PDF. It's a huge table of all of our products, powders, liquids, and epoxies, compared to all of our competitors' products. So you can cross-reference which ones are going to be the most comparable. Great. Yeah, it is good stuff. Thank you for saying that. Um, I, and actually what I'll do is, um, I really can't put the search button in there that she referenced, but I can get that document and 
Um, when you guys get my thank you email like you do each week, I will put that link in there uh, so you can check it out. I hope that would help. I'll talk with Holly and see if there's anything else that might be, be good for you guys to see so you can go straight to that with the website. Yeah. Any other questions? While you guys are typing and thinking, um, you know, I just want to tell you again, we do this every week at 1 p.m. Uh, oh, there's a question. We also have a team of chemical technical special, specialists in every market that are readily available to pursue. And this is actually not a question. This is from one of my favorite sales guys, Mr. Mitch. Uh, and as Holly had mentioned, and now Mitch is, Mitch is mentioning, is we do have that chemical technical specialist in every market. They're available to pursue specs. Um, I was going to put that link in that email as well. And what happens is you can call them straight on and contact them to get specification assistance. Um, any products that were in uh, that need to be specified, they can help you with that to make sure that the specification documents are written correctly, checked out, and potentially approved to move forward with your job. They also have extra resources available to them to help you better cross-reference competitive products as needed. That is true. Thank you. As a marketing person, sometimes I don't want to talk about our competitors, but I appreciate that, Holly, and I'm sure they do on the phone as well. <laughs> All right, any other questions for those of you on the phone or the chat room? All right, well, I want to extend a big thank you for joining us again. Um, I already said that we have these every Tuesday on different subject matters, different product experts joining us. The recording will be made available later on today, probably around 3 p.m. Uh, I'll send you that email, let you know where it is and how to get it. Um, you can always find it on YouTube, like I said in the beginning. And uh, don't forget to sign up for the next training Tuesday. That will be, uh, we'll be discussing what, curing and sealing, I believe. Um, yeah, so with that, I want to thank you again, and everybody have a happy Tuesday. Bye. Thank you.